Have you played the Wii game? F. One of the worst games I've ever played in my life. Next to Bioshock Infinite, of course. Just kidding. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. We just finished the 5K JPOG special, so be sure to check that out if you haven't. Now, let's move forward with our next paleo documentary, Sea Monsters. Not that one. Sea Monsters, a prehistoric adventure, was made by National Geographic, being released in 2007, where the BBC show is presented like an Animal Planet show with the host finding and talking about animals. National Geographic goes for the straight up nature doc style, following the life of a female Dolly Karinchops in the Western Interior Seaway. Before we dive in, I do want to note that Mammals vs. Dinosaurs is on my radar and should technically come first, but I can't find full episodes online, at least from a site that's not bad sus. So I'm skipping ahead to this review. Now, how does this sea monsters hold up scientifically? Let's dig this up. I'm not gonna mince words here. Sea Monsters A Prehistoric Adventure does exactly what every dino doc should. It sets a gold standard. Why? Because the creator stuck to the science and continuously reinforced its portrayals with talk of actual discoveries. You can argue that, yes, a lot of shows do the same thing, and it's great when they do, but too often the science is used solely as a baseline from which the writers can go crazy. Here's a good life lesson. The biggest lies have nuggets of truth in them. Just enough for you to buy everything. Well, not here. National Geographic gives us actual, hardcore, based paleontology. A good example is when the main subjects, a brother and sister Dolly Karinchops, get attacked by Cretaceous sharks. This passes the vibe check since there has been an association between these polycotylids and sharks. Specifically, Cretoxyvina and Squalicorax. A wide variety of animal behaviors like this are on full display thanks to the many finds of paleontologists that give us glimpses into prehistoric life. We do have direct evidence of birth in plesiosaurians. The pregnant remains of a polycotylus have been discovered. What scientists found were not eggs, but a well-developed fetus. So if this very close relative of the dolly gave birth to live young, then they did too. Maybe they also ditched their children at a gas station like my parents did. Unfortunately, we haven't found any evidence to prove that. What we do have though are Hesperornis remains being found in the gut of a Tylosaurus, so there's a clear indicator of a predator-prey relationship like we see in the movie. This is really just a start of all the on-point behaviors we get. For most documentaries we cover, this would be the end of it, but I have to keep going. I owe you guys at home that much. Zephactinus is portrayed as a 6 meter giant with a bulldog face that likes to guzzle down fish. Well, a fossil found in 1952 by George Sternberg actually has a 6 foot Gilicus arcuatus trapped inside. This outstanding catch probably ruptured the organs of the Zephactinus, killing the overly enthusiastic predator. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna blow up? It'll go right to your thighs! <laughs> My thighs? And then you blow up. Maybe they could form a successful YouTube channel around this. Who knows? In the last Sea Monsters, we saw an actual pack or pod of Tylosaurus cooperatively hunting, which I had to point out most likely wasn't the case. Tylosaurus shows fossil evidence of infighting, with one 16 foot individual possessing fatal bite marks on the head from a tougher, larger individual. Probably a Chad. Your Tylosaurus versus the Tylosaurus she tells you not to worry about. And the last of many prevalent behaviors I'll note is how Hesperornis actually feeds by diving for fish. Too bad they don't get much screen time. No! Once again, the behaviors in the newer sea monsters work so well because they're largely based on fossil evidence. They even have segments when they reenact these amazing discoveries. As poorly acted as they are, just going the extra mile with this makes all the difference. We know that the writers weren't just pulling stuff out of their butt or making wild assumptions from limited evidence. Okay, okay, it isn't just the behaviors that are great. 
the vast majority of prehistoric creatures are in the right place at the right time in the Western Interior Seaway about 80 million years ago. My only real complaint would be the brief appearance of Gorgosaurus, which shouldn't appear until around 76 million years ago. Aside from that, we're all good here. Of course, this wouldn't be a dinosaur documentary review without mentioning the designs. Most of them are really good and accurate to real life, especially for 2007. The dollies have their strange appearance, similar to modern dolphins, and we're about the same size too. This is a perfect example of convergent evolution, how similar selection pressures cause both these marine reptiles and cetaceans to develop similar features. I also appreciate our brief look at the pteranodons. In an all too uncommon event, they're correctly shown with their more upturned beaks and sexual dimorphism with the male being larger and having longer crests. And lastly, some love needs to be shown for the colorations of the marine reptiles. Much of what we get are dark blues and blacks, which is in line with the fossil record. Pigment cells called melanosomes have been found in mosasaur specimens, indicating a darker coloration. Paleontologists are still unsure whether this means they were dark all around, like in the case of ichthyosaurids, or if they more resembled sharks and orcas with countershading, being black on top and white on bottom. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but I don't feel like getting demonetized today. I was not expecting sea monsters to get so much right. But as usual, there are aspects that don't hold up to our understanding of these animals today. Perhaps the most notable is the lack of tail flukes on marine reptiles. Mosasaurs and plesiosaurians both developed tail flukes, or fins, independently of course. The two entered the seas at drastically different times, descending from very different reptile lineages. Mosasaurs were related to snakes and monitor lizards, while plesiosaurians came from a diverse group of reptiles called Sauropteragea. Soft tissue has been found on both creatures, revealing the presence of flukes. Mosasaurs would have had a vertical, shark-like fin, except much smaller. I keep saying plesiosaurians to encompass any polycotylids, elasmosaurids, and even pliosaurids we briefly encounter. It is still debated whether they had more of a vertical, rudder-like caudal fin, or a horizontal fluke as seen in cetaceans. Heck, this is an extremely diverse group, so maybe their tails had a variety of forms? We might be getting into some Dan Schneider territory here, but we should talk about feet. Hesperornis is traditionally shown to have lobe-finned feet like we see here, but over the past few years, this interpretation has come into question. It has been argued that web feet are also a possibility. Ugh. Now that that's over, Tarantino, you can stop watching. This short movie briefly shows off a giant squid called Tusatuthis. Well, unfortunately for the writers, it has since been synonymized with Encotuthis. And besides, it was an octopus anyways rather than a squid. Eels. And lastly, while octopuses are in the mind, we need to have a chat about inking. They're not getting awesome tattoos, but cephalopods are known for shooting ink as a defense mechanism. Octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish do this. In ammonites or aminoids, however, this is unclear. In the past, studies of Cretaceous aminoids have shown the presence of ink or ink sacs. More recently though, a 2021 paper dismisses these claims since the melanin that was supposed to indicate ink was actually present in other body structures. Other descriptions of ink or ink sacs have also been refuted. It's always fun to see just how much our views of prehistoric life change over time. Maybe a time traveler is watching this and laughing at my total ignorance? Who knows? Putting my film review hat back on for a moment, the human segments do take up too much time and interrupt way too often. Unlike other dino docs we've seen, these aren't consistent. Instead, they jump around to random times, places, and people. I'm just saying that, as important as they are, they're jarring. Plus, a lot of the acting is subpar to say the least. Thankfully for National Geographic, this doesn't affect the grade. I just like complaining. Not as much as a Karen at Duncan, but still. The creators are an unsuspecting teens just trying to make it through their minimum wage shift, so I have no remorse. Scientific problems are very few and far between, you know, outdated stuff aside. 
The only non-avian dinosaur we see, a uh, Marty McFly Gorgosaurus, is very shrink-wrapped. It's on screen for only a few seconds, so it doesn't really matter. The animators do exaggerate some features on its subjects. The Styxosaurus does have decently sized eyes and long interlocking teeth, but this is ridiculous. Still not as bad as the proportions of Pixar moms though. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Sea Monsters, A Prehistoric Adventure is a prime example of a documentary done right. It's able to be entertaining without ever getting over the top. The writers played it safe by sticking closely to scientific discoveries, which is good for an education-based program. There are no crazy hypotheses or wild speculation. While the 2007 Sea Monsters may not have the same pure entertainment value as its earlier namesake, it certainly ramps up the accuracy. And for that, I have to grant this documentary the first ever A. Strangely enough, the most accurate dinosaur documentary is the one with barely any dinosaurs in it. I did not see that coming. Before I close, I should mention that Jurassic Fight Club would be next on the list, but I've already done a whole rant and rewrite of the series. Everything needed to be said has been said already. But if you want to get into all the nitty gritty details, PaleoNerd has an awesome series review. So for next time, that leaves us with... Oh no. Oh no. No 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 no! Wait 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 wait! Wait 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 wait! Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.